everyone, it's your boy Graphic back with another video and today we're going to be looking at the bows and we're going to be doing a little bit of an overview over every single bow and their abilities. I was able to make a alternate, alternate account and uh, get a dummy out here for us so we can kind of uh, experiment with some of these abilities and show you guys what they look like. I know not everybody has used all weapons so this could be a good bow overview for you guys. Um, as we will start with the Adept's Bow. One of the cheapest bows you can get is the uh, regular bow. Uh, up here we have the Adept's Bow, the Adept's Long Bow, the Adept's War Bow, the Whispering Bow, the Wailing Bow, and the Bow of Badan. The Bow of Badan is about 120k, uh, the most expensive by far. And then we kind of go in this order uh, from price. We have the Long Bow maybe up front before the Bow, and then... Uh, the bow, the war bow, the whispering bow, the wailing bow, and then the bow of the dawn. But uh, that does not mean the bow of the dawn is by far the best or anything like that. I would like to mention that these bottom three are uh, what you would consider... Um, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? These are... Hmm, I'm struggling. Let's just click that. Artifact. These are artifact weapons these are artifact bows these bottom three right here so these are regular bows that you can level up separately and then these are artifact bows so we will start out with a adept's bow as our looks like our login maybe has logged our dummy has logged out on us um i will bring him back from the dead for us here i don't know hopefully that won't be much of a problem but let's read the abilities while we try to get that back up so we have the adept's bow um the multi shot the deadly shot and the Poisoned Arrow are what you're going to be looking at there as the Q ability. On every bow, it's going to be the same. You're going to have that same chance to run any of these Qs. Uh, the Multi-Shot hit enemies in a cone in front of you for 147 damage. Not very many people use that. You could maybe get away with using that in PvE, but not many people use that in even PvE. So then we have the Deadly Shot, as it looks like Graphics Dummy is now back in the, in the game for us. Um, but we have the Deadly Shot, shoots an arrow in a straight line that pierces through all enemies in its path, dealing 178 physical damage and decreasing enemy resistances by 7 for 6 seconds. Uh, not a terrible ability, it's not, definitely not the most overpowered ability, but, you know, it's not a bad ability, most people will actually use this when they're going in an attack speed build to run the Deadly Shot. Uh, and then we have the Poison Arrow, which is good for PvE and killing bosses. Um, as you can stack 3... Uh, poisoned arrows on an enemy and you do 52 damage directly and then you do 21 damage per second uh, per stack for six seconds um, and then we're gonna be looking at the W the W is also gonna be uh, the same throughout all builds but what you're gonna notice here is at the wailing bow and bow badan you get two abilities actually quicker than you would get the other abilities the other abilities you only have the options to use explosive arrows and frost shot um, and that's because you're at tier 4. At tier 6 on the Warbow, um, you get the ability to run, um, you know, Frost Shot or, or, not Frost Shot, you get the ability to run Speed Shot or uh, Ray of Light just like you do on the Willing Bow and the Bow of Badan. But as our, you know, our dummy's logging in and on and off, I'll probably bring him back up when we actually showcase some of these abilities. I guess we'll put, we'll put the bow on, maybe get in a duel with him real quick so we can showcase some of the, uh, the main ability which is the enchanted quiver the enchanted quiver is definitely one of the main abilities but I actually didn't even go over uh, the W's so I'm gonna go back to that as I'm trying to skip ahead this del the dummies kinda throw me off a little bit here <coughs> but the explosive arrows uh, your next 10 arrows will explode on an enemy contact this gets deactivate or activated by normal attacks as well as with spells each explosion deals 53 damage uh, pretty strong ability uh, as we're going to start the duel here with the dummy. Um, yeah, we do have it on um, on the Adept Bow. So that is going to be a pretty strong ability. We're actually going to click that, and we're going to show you guys the Deadly Shot, maybe, and um, the Enchanted Quiver, which you get 18 Enchanted Arrows. Every normal attack with an Enchanted Arrow will increase your normal attack damage by 35% and attack speed by 15%. Um, and this stacks up to six times and on max stacks your arrows will reduce the enemy's resistances by 39 for three seconds um, Another very strong ability right there the adept bows actually use quite a lot for attack speed builds um, When you're going to go and attack speed to build obviously you're going to want to run piercing arrows on the um, On this weapon because the piercing arrows is much stronger where it kind of you know 
increases your target's damage taken by 1.967% um, for three seconds, and it stacks up to four times, and that's going to be a lot stronger than just getting restored energy and slowing somebody unless you're going for a gank and you have a tier six and you get the ray of light but you don't have ray of light on this ability or on this weapon yet like you would if you're running wheeling bow or bow but on the ray of light is an arrow that shoots uh straight down from the sky which rains down at th okay here we go we're going to reread that for you guys the ray of light shoots an arrow into the sky which rains down at the ground after a short delay any enemy hit takes 460 magical damage and is rooted for 2.89 seconds uh, very strong ability. A lot of people use it uh, for ganking for sure. And it's definitely uh, one of maybe the best ways to gank with a bow. Uh, because if you don't have it, you don't actually have any snares or stuns or anything really. Maybe a slow if you go the uh, slow poison down here. But, you know, that's about it. So you do want to run Ray of Light if you're looking to gank. If you're not looking to gank, explosive arrows might be the way to go. And we're going to kind of show you guys right here um, with the current build we have on. So we're going to have the... Uh, all abilities are selected. We're going to show you guys what they look like here. The Q right here is a multi, or not multi shot. That's deadly shot right there. That The deadly shot actually, like I said, it uh, pierces through all enemies in its path and it deals 182 physical damage, increases resistances by seven for six seconds. And it can stack up to three times and you can shoot it pretty quick. I don't know if you guys saw the cooldown right there. The cooldown is only three seconds uh, and that's going to be the strongest part about this. Uh, ability is it's just the cooldown is amazing now we're gonna get started with the explosive arrows um, the explosive arrows is one of the strongest parts of this build because it actually does damage in an AOE function um, in five meter radius as you can see and it does a lot more damage than it would if you were not running the explosive arrows I, the regular arrows obviously do a lot less damage so now the enchanted quiver you're not gonna get to see much of it here but I mean it's pretty much the same idea as it says here is you get 18 enchanted arrows every normal attack will with an enchanted arrow will increase your normal and attack damage by 35 percent attack speed by 15 percent and it stacks up to six times on max stacks your arrows will also reduce the enemy's resistance this is going to be the strongest part of running this bow is the fact that you're able to uh, use this as an attack speed bow is one of the strongest parts for sure so right there you saw i got the ability i have 18 um or I have 24 seconds the remaining. I'm not sure what the 18 is. I'm assuming that would be the amount of arrows yet. So I have 18 arrows, and I'm at 18 arrows left. So after this, I'll be at 17, and right here will be at 16. Uh, but you were able to see kind of the abilities that we run with the bow. Um, it's a very strong bow. I know a lot of people like to run this, like I said, with an attack speed and maybe in PvP, but you're not going to see much of it in PvE um, as this bow is not near as strong in PvE. And we're going to skip ahead now because we are taking a little bit of time. We're going to try to speed it up for you guys' sake. We're going to be jumping onto the longbow, and at this point, it will go a little bit faster because we don't have uh, too many unique abilities. At the, oh, I'm not trying to trade. I need to duel you. Um, there we go. So I'm not trying to trade, obviously. At the, or <laughs> I'm not trying to... Um, re-explain the Q and the W and the passives. The passives in Q and W are all going to be the same. So obviously we're going to probably go, unless you're doing PvE, because the longbow is meant for PvE for the most part, and maybe some ZVZ, which is uh, Zerg versus Zerg or Alliance versus Alliance. So uh, for the most part, you're going to go uh, piercing arrows, though, for more damage. And this is a PvE bow, so we're going to focus on going a poisoned arrow, which is good for boss kills. Uh, and you're going to be running an explosive arrows, which is good for AOE damage. And the Reign of Arrows is going to be the unique ability here, uh, doing a channel, a massive volley of arrows onto a ground target. Enemies in this area will repeatedly take 106 damage and get slowed by 20% for 2.27 seconds. The full channel hits six times. So it's going to do a lot of damage, and you're going to witness that right here. So you're able to see it does a lot of damage, and if that's AOE, and you're running actual gear um, with, you know, with a, the four flat even, you're going to do a lot of damage. It's going to be amazing for a PvE. Uh, so if you're looking to run random dungeons, this is definitely the build to go is Longbow. Um, and then we're going to have the Poison Arrow, which, you know, is going to be a different queue than we had last time, even though it was still available. And you're going to see it, you know, it can stack. Um, you can keep that stack on there. And I won't reapply another stack because it will end up killing him. Uh, but the W I do has as explosive errors and you've already seen that. So we'll just pop another E and you can cancel it by the way, by running right away. So you, if you are in trouble, you can cancel it, uh, by taking off or you can accidentally cancel it like I actually did there. Um, so you don't want to accidentally cancel obviously when you're in PVE and you have no threat. So 
let's move on to maybe the biggest solo uh, ganking bow in the game. Uh, this is definitely the bow you use to gank as a solo player. Um, we'll use multi-shot this time around for you guys' sake, even though I would never suggest using multi-shot. Um, we'll use the frost shot for uh, as well. I don't really suggest these abilities, uh, but I will like to show you guys what they look like and what the you know the purposes of them. And then we'll just uh, we can stick with a piercing for there. But the magic arrow is the unique ability for the warbow, and it fires a magic arrow which deals 521 magical damage if the enemy is farther away, and 385 magical damage if the enemy is in close proximity. So obviously, this will do more damage if you're farther away from the uh, target. So right here, we're going to accept, um, and we're going to run away with the Warbow. And this Warbow is definitely going to be your PvP solo ganking uh, Warbow is the best for it because of your E damage. And you're obviously going to want a Tier 6 Warbow, though, because at Tier 6, you get the Ray of Light Snare um, on the Warbow. And that's why T6 is all you're going to be seeing if you're seeing Warbow PvPers. Um, I know there's a couple Warbow PvPers on YouTube, and, you know, obviously they're going to run Tier 6. And they'll probably run, like, a Mage Cow with it or something like that. But, you know, they're going to be running T6 Warbow so they get that Ray of Light. But first we'll start with the Multi-Shot. The Multi-Shot you'll see there, it doesn't do much damage. Uh, but it is up a lot, so you can, you know, spam it. But every Q is going to be up a lot, so it's not going to be that strong. Uh, we're going to see the Frost Shot which is going to actually put a slow on them uh, for 40 per by 40%, and it's going to get you out of there pretty well. It's going to leap you back 13 meters. So you're going to see my E damage right here is going to be pretty bonkers. Uh, you're going to see right there it does about half of that health, and obviously if you were farther back when you did it, you would do more damage. Uh, another thing to note is the multi-shot has a short range. So right here I'm not going to be able to hit him. Uh, it ends about right here at the flag. So you're going to be able to use your E, obviously, at any range. I want to show you guys actually how far your E actually goes. Um, I know it goes this distance, so I'll show you that. Uh, the, the range on the E is definitely going to be the, one of the strongest parts. Is Your W on Ray of Light, as you guys will be seeing coming up, uh, is going to be one of the strongest uh, ranged abilities as well. So we'll see that here in a second as, after we get over this Whispering Bow. The Whispering Bow was we have a speed shot now coming out for the W. It's actually available there uh, as the dummy backs out on us uh, again. And I think that's my phone. I have it on my phone, actually, uh, the dummy on my phone. Um, and he's just disconnecting every time it goes away, so that's why I'm randomly touching on my phone. I'll figure out a better way to do it for the next video. But for now, I'll just have to uh, try to focus on doing both things at once. Um, and then we have the, we, so like I said, we have the Whispering Bow, and the Whispering Bow is, uh, gonna be a pretty underwhelming bow. Um, it does apply self-buff, which increases your attack range by 35% while active. Each auto attack deals an additional 124 magic damage per hit. Um, it can be used in, I think they use it in GVGs occasionally, uh, but it's, it's really not that strong of a bow, um, you know, some people will probably hate me for that because they probably love it, but I don't think it's too strong of a bow, and we're going to go in and see why I believe that here in a second once this guy loads in for me. He's loading. The dummy is loading in. Uh, but we could actually probably test the E out without... Um, there we go. He's back anyway. Well, maybe not. The phone's kind of dying on us, guys. I think Alliance Territories also has dummies, so I could probably go to an Alliance Territory next time. Uh, and they have dummies that I won't have to freaking uh, duel every time. So that could be nice. Uh, but we did get the duel off, and we'll see what we do here. So, like I said, the E is going to give you a self-buff, which increases your attack range by 35%. And then the speed shot's going to deal uh, 165 damage, and it increases your move speed by 20%, and your attack speed by 50%. So you can see the attack speed increase right here. Uh, it's going to increase it by quite a bit, but um, now we're going to see the E... So right here, the E is popped. It doesn't have a long uh, time to use it. But you can see the attack range is just so far away. And you can see the amount of damage you do is actually pretty insane. So I could definitely see it being a useful ability in GVGs. Maybe if you're, you know, you get that top, um, you get that top position and you're, you know, just going off on them with autos with the Whispering Bow. It could be strong. Um... I, you know, I may have underestimated the damage. I, it does seem to do a lot of damage. Obviously, this is to a guy that's a dummy, but I haven't played a good Whispering Bow. played against one, so that would be probably the reason for that uh, bias a little bit. Uh, here we're going to look at the Ray of Light, and um, you do get a attack speed bonus if you'd like it on the Wailing Bow and the Bovidon because you are 
um, running these more advanced bows so you are able to get that sooner than a tier six like you would on any other bow so we are going to be running the ray of light like i said and we're going to be starting this duel up and we're going to read the difference on the e which is the unique ability remember that um the demon arrow fires a demonic arrow that pierces through enemies each time an enemy is hit by the arrow it becomes stronger causing it to do more damage to subsequent targets um, you won't be able to see it very well here, but it does do more damage uh, between each target it hits. So if you hit four or five targets, you're going to do a lot more damage than you are going to do if you have one target. Uh, this bow is actually not used very often. As, um, you know, I said that with the other bow, but the other bow is used a lot more than even uh, the whaling. What is this? The whaling bow? Yeah, the whaling bow is not used near as often. So right there, you're going to see that the W does do a lot of damage, and it does root them for a good amount of time. So... The W is obviously going to be one of the strongest parts of this bow because you're able to get it so early on. But look at the E right here. You know, that was a decent amount of damage, but it's not near as easy to hit as the explosive arrow on the war bow. So that would be our magic arrow. My bad, not explosive arrow. But uh, that would be why you wouldn't want to run the, the demon arrow build with the a wailing bow. It is only about 21k for a 4-1 on the Wailing Bow, so you could always, you know, test the waters with it maybe, run out and do some PvP. Um, you could get a lot accomplished trying to, you know, use the Ray of Light plus the, you know, plus the Demonic Arrow or Demon Arrow, because it's kind of the same thing as a Warbow, which is the most common used PvP uh, build. So I will end up just killing him here as we move on to the last bow. Uh, the Bow of Badan. Um, we are going to use the Ray of Light again to show you guys some more of that action. But the Bow of Badan is one that I would say is maybe the least used. Um, and I don't know the real reason as to why. Um, because it does have a decent E ability. It is a small range. But it shoots a lightning arrow which creates a storm cloud on impact with an enemy. The cloud lasts for 4.8 seconds and constantly hits an enemies within 5 meters of its radius. Which is kind of hard to hit. That is a small range. So that might have something to do with it. Um, to read here it says. Let's see where you go. I got to accept that. There we go. This lightning interrupts enemy casting and deals 70 magic damage every 0.3 seconds. After leaving the area the enemy will be hit by lightning additional 7 times. So you're going to see that actually does decent amount of damage. We're going to pop it here. Um, so let's see here. Let's run out of there. He's going to continue to get hit now because he ran out. And you're going to see the damage is a lot. But you definitely have to hit it. And if you don't hit it, you're not going to do any damage. Um, but it is it can, it can be strong at times. It definitely can be. Um, as I use the multi-shot there. And then I'm going to finish him off with the Ray of Light since you guys haven't really seen that yet. Uh, the range on it is just crazy. And that's why Ray of Light is used in the open world PvP. Um, but that's kind of an overview of all of the bows. Um, these are all four flat. And, well, I have a 4-1 Wailing Bow, but, you know, these are pretty inexpensive at 4 flat. Uh, the Warbow starts to get up there at Tier 6. It's, I think it's about 115k for a T6 Warbow. Um, but the Bow Badan is going to be an expensive, expensive, uh, you know, item at all, all, at all tiers. It's going to be expensive and expensive and expensive because it has, has the opportunity to be, you know, one of the strongest bows. It just, it kind of lacks in a, in a way... Um, that's kind of underwhelming. So, it, it, I mean, it can be used correctly, though. Like I said, all these bows are actually kind of relevant. Um, they just have different ways to go about using them or different, you know, places they're better at. Um, obviously, the longbow is best at PvE. The warbow is good at open world PvP. The um, whaling bow could be, you know, maybe a training method to use your before you get to the warbow uh, because you can use it at Tier 4. And the Bow Badan, you know, has a very strong ability that can be, you know, used in maybe ZVZs. Um, the Whispering Bow could also maybe be used in ZVZs, definitely GVGs, as that Undead Arrows is very strong. And then you got the Adept's Bow, which can be used in Hellgate's 2v2s because of that attack speed buff that's going to be pretty ridiculous, the Enchanted Quiver. Um, but that's going to be the Bow Overview for today. And I'll, guys, I'll have to see you guys next time as I'm going to take off. Later, guys.